Greetings, family. Bishop Coleman coming to you again with another video. This video is entitled Spiritual Conversion. Spiritual Conversion. A lot of times we get away from the basics the basics of salvation. Sometimes we get away from it. We realize that we have to be converted. Something has to take place. I don't care if you are a, a Hebrew Israelite or whatever, you're still going to have to uh, undergo conversion. There has to be a process that takes place in your life. There has to be a rebirth that has to take place in your life. Uh, Christ says, Marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. This is what he told Nicodemus. So uh, a conversion has to take place. Let's take a brief look at Conversion. It says, spiritual conversion is the adoption of a set of beliefs identified with one peculiar religious denomination, particular religious denomination, to the exclusion of others. Thus, religious conversion would describe the abandoning of adherence to one denomination and affiliating with another. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about the conversion of Paul. Uh, Paul had to undergo a conversion. When you check the scriptures, you find out that Paul was a very, very versed individual. He was a Hebrew of Hebrew. He sat up under the feet of Gamaliel and studied the law. Uh, he, he was, he was uh, equipped. He was equipped. He spake several different languages. Uh, this man was educated. Uh, and uh, he went and uh, got letters. Uh, he was persecuting the church. And he was doing it lawfully. He got letters from the rulers. And, and he was able to bring men and women bound and place them in prison. And, and maybe sometime put them to death. Because we see in the scriptures where um, uh, they laid their coat at the feet of a young man by the name of Saul while they were stoning uh, Stephen. So we see that um, uh, Paul is not just a newcomer or a novice, but he had extensive training. He knew about the law. He was a studier and a teacher of the law. And he was well versed, but he had to undergo a conversion. Um, this this is a powerful uh, uh, incident that happened to him, and, and we're going to take a look at it. We're going to look into the scripture. All right. We look at Second uh, Corinthians five seventeen says, therefore, if any man be in Christ. He is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now, uh, you don't hear a, a lot of this in um, Hebrewism, um, you know, for whatever reason. But uh, I believe it's necessary. Uh, the scripture says, therefore, as a result of being in Christ, you become new. You are a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things, all things become new. So this conversion is, is, is very necessary. Let's take a look at what happened to Paul. We're going to look in the book of Acts chapter 9, and we're going to start uh, at the first verse. It says, And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings, that's what it says. Yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogue 
that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. So we see that that Paul, uh, he wanted to do things right. So he went to the high priest and got letters. And uh, he, he was a, a stone believer in the law. He felt that these people were coming up with something new. And uh, we, we're not having that. You know, um, that's almost the, the take of the church today. Many people think because we have resorted back to this uh, era where Paul is dealing with right here. That's, this is the same thing that he's dealing with. Uh, people have reverted from what Paul went through and the conversion and change and going back to what he was in before he changed uh, the law and only the law. But uh, grace was in, ushered in and uh, Paul had to change uh, his mindset and some things had to uh, uh, be adjusted in his life. All right, let's, let's continue on. It says, uh, verse 3, And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined around about him a light from heaven. So we see that uh, if the Most High wants to get your attention, he knows how to get your attention. If he wants you to... Um, change your your format from what you've been doing he knows how to get you to change so as he journeyed he came near damascus and suddenly there shined around about him a light from heaven all right let's continue it says and he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him saul saul why persecuted thou me why are you persecuting me why are you uh disrupting what i've got going on this is what this voice said to him why are you persecuting me all right let's see what paul said and he said who art thy lord and the lord said i am jesus or yahushua who, whom thou persecuted, it is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. So um, he's got a conversation, a dialogue going on with the Lord. Now, I want you to take notice here. This, uh, this is very important what I'm getting ready to say right here. Now, at this time, Christ has descended and went back to heaven, ascended, rather. He's ascended and went back to heaven. And, but we find him talking and holding a conversation when the light shined from heaven. And he said that I am Jesus whom thou persecuted. It is hard for thee to kick against the prick. He's not in the flesh. He's in the spirit because he's in the form of a light. So, so that, that is a, a testimony that he still used that divine name when he came in the spirit form, not in the fleshly form. All right, let's, let's continue. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do sometimes people don't know what to tell people well we have it right here in scripture what to do we got it in scripture uh when nicodemus came to the lord and uh, asked him some questions and and um uh, the lord just went straight to the remedy and people have gotten away from the remedy. Maybe they think it's not important. But since it's in the word of God, I choose to share it with you. All right, let's continue on. It says, verse 7, 
And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. But seeing no man. They heard the voice speaking, but they didn't see anybody. You know, um, uh, we, we, we have to understand that he's in the spirit form even today. He speaks to us today speaking to us through his word and sometimes he speak to us in a rhema word a rhema word is a now word a rhema word is a word that's not in the bible the, the words that come from the bible are the logos words but sometimes he speak to us in rhema words and this is what he's doing with paul at this time he's speaking in the rhema fashion all right let's cool Continue, verse number eight, it says, And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man, but they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. Now one scripture said, when this light shined, it outshined the noonday sun. So that was so bright. Sometimes when you look directly at the sun, it blinds you. Sometimes the sun is very, very uh, 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 intense you can't look at it it may blind you so this uh, light to shine from heaven was so bright that it all shined the noonday sun and it blinded Paul so now we find them they had, he had to be led by the hand and brought to Damascus alright verse number 9 says and he was three days without sight and neither did eat nor drink so sometimes when something dramatic happened to you to take your appetite but he didn't have an encounter so he automatically his body just went in fasting mode sometime when you uh, uh, something happened you may lose a lot of money or something take your appetite something drastic happened so something happened in his life that, that took away uh, his sight and he hadn't eaten for three days. All right. Verse 10. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street which is called straight and inquire in the house of Judas one that is called Saul of Tarsus for behold he prayed so don't tell me the Lord don't hear your prayers he was praying and fasting because when we see where he hadn't ate for three days he's on a three day fast and can't see nothing seeking the face of the Lord and can't see all right, let's, let's move forward. It says, verse 12, And has seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he have done to thy saints at Jerusalem. So sometime, you know, the father would take a person that is the opposite of what we think. Uh, a person that you think he ain't got it together. He's all he's in left field. He can take a person from a, a place that you think that you know you might be talking about him, call him all kind of crazy names because he haven't come into the knowledge yet. See, Saul hadn't came to the knowledge yet, and the people that were in the way. They 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 were afraid of him. They didn't they didn't feel like he had a part or should even be a part of what they was doing. So sometimes you cast judgment too fast. Now the Most High he he can switch up things and and make your head swim. You you might be sitting in the kingdom next to somebody you go up and down with going to hell. So we judge nothing before time. All right? Verse 14. And here he hath authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. To bind them up. 
everybody calling on the name that, that bring that blood. Bring them here bound. So, so in other words, while he was in the middle of doing that, that name came to him and knocked him down. See, don't tell me. That, you know, it'll knock you down. The power of the Lord is strong. All right, let's continue on. Verse number 15. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles, the kings, and the children of Israel. So look at that. Let that soak in. He said uh, I have. he's a chosen vessel. Sometimes people are down on folk. You don't know who the Lord chose. You got to lay back. Because the Father, he used who he will. Just because he ain't saying what you think he ought to say, that doesn't mean it's not a chosen vessel. You have to watch how you talk to uh, the people of God, to the chosen of God, because you can say some things that you may have to end up eating it up, have to take it back. Because, you know, this, this ain't our, we didn't write the script for this. The script already been wrote. You can't change it. It's already set in stone. And, and the Father use who he will. He'll elevate who he will. I don't care how long you've been doing it. You remember the parable of the people that have been working all day and they agreed to go out in the field and work? And then there was one that, that came late, came on the scene late, and he agreed with him for a penny. He went on out in the field and worked. When payday came, the other ones have been out there all the time. They want to get upset because I hear this man, he just came in. What are you doing getting the same thing we getting? Well, the Lord had to reprimand them and say, didn't you agree with me for a penny? Well, shut your mouth. You getting what you agree. So sometimes, you know, we, we think we got seniority or think this and that and another. Uh, the father... He, he, he'll slap you over. He'll, he'll just put you in isolation until your pride die down. Let all the folk run to somebody else. You standing over there by yourself, huffing and puffing. We got to line up with this thing. And now now here, they they was trying to block, block Saul because, you know, of his reputation. But... The Lord looked beyond that because he seen some attributes in this man that he could use to further the kingdom. Look at that verse again. It says, But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, not you, unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. So he, he wasn't just to one group, but he was to multiple people. That's where, where all these epistles come in there. Now, yes, it fell in the hands of the Gentiles, and they fumbled the ball and, and became uplifted. And now they're going to have to stand in line for chastisement. Yes, sir. That's right. So uh, um, let's, let's continue on. Let's see what the next scripture said. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. So uh, he's showing him great things that he's going to have to suffer. I'm going to show him great things that he's going to have to suffer. So folk that's trying to come over here and 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 think you you know going to run to the top, you running in the suffering. This is a suffering way. That's what the Most High said. Uh, he said, "For I will show." Him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And this is no picnic or no walking apart. It's a suffering way. And uh, those of us that choose this way, just get ready. You're going to have to suffer. All right? Verse number 17 says, And Ananias went his way and entered into the house, and putting his hands on his, him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, have sent me, 
that thou mayest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Wow, now look at that. Isn't that something? He's he talking about the Holy Ghost. I don't even know if Paul even knew anything about the Holy Ghost. So people don't want to talk about that. They, they, they don't feel like that. This is during his conversion. This is during the conversion of uh, Saul. We're talking about conversion. That he's talking about the Holy Ghost when when he's at the beginning. He's at the beginning stages. He he can't see, and the the Ananias is laying hands on him. Yeah, the laying on hands is still in season today. Receiving the Holy Ghost is still in season today. All of this is still in season. People are not doing it, but that doesn't mean it's not in season. Verse number 18, and immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received sight forthwith and arose and was baptized. Hold it. What are you doing getting baptized? You've been studying the law and you know all the law and everything. Well, what, what, why do you have to stop and get baptized? We're talking about the Holy Ghost and all that stuff. That's part of his conversion. If it's good enough for him, it should be good enough for us. Let's continue on. It says in verse number 19, And when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Then was saw certain days with the disciples, which were at Damascus. So he was in training now. See, sometimes people, they jump up and run out and you know, haven't got any training and you can't tell them nothing, you know, and uh, you know what the Lord going to do? He going to let them spin their wheels and do all their little stuff that they doing. They ain't gonna, he ain't going to let them go get nowhere because you tried to jump over, you tried to jump the gun. You ain't even learned the basics yet. So you got to take your time. You got too many overnight folks. Ain't been through nothing. Want to turn around and tell the person that's in charge? We we'll try to line him up. Try to let him, he, the Lord ain't sending nobody. No, ain't sending you nobody. He ain't gonna, and then the folk that he's sending you, that they, they're gonna be listening to somebody else and on the side. I'm trying to tell you what 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 the Word of God is doing, whether you believe it or not. This is what's happening. All right, let's continue on. Verse 20. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues. And that is, uh, that he is the son of God. What is he doing in the synagogue? Well, the synagogue is, is, is sort of like the church. And people don't want well to, to assembly. It's all like the assembly, you know, so people get twisted up on words. So I have to try to speak where you can get an understanding. That's what it's all about. Words are used that we'll be able to understand one another, what we're talking about. So straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. Hmm. All right. So we got to understand that conversion is very, very important. You have to be converted. You remember um, when Nicodemus went to Christ and asked him some questions. He said, no man can, can do the miracles that you do except God be with him. That's what he that's what he told Christ. Then Christ jumped right over everything, all the accolades and all of the, you know, swelling words. He told him, you must be born again. You gotta be converted. You, you need a spiritual conversion. The Bible says that 
I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So we got to understand that that this conversion is still necessary. You got to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your mind got to be renewed. Spirit got to be renewed. Heart got to be renewed. You need a conversion to take place. And sometimes we need we need to have a a, 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 a revisitation of the spirit. Sometimes we need to, to be re, revived, restored. Yes, sometimes we need to be restored. It need to be gone over again. And go back to that scripture. Uh, in uh, uh, when I started with it says, Second uh, Corinthians five seventeen says, therefore, as a result of being in Christ, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. That hasn't changed. That's still the same. So Paul had a conversion while he was going on the road to Damascus. He changed totally. He he was ready to beat folks and bring bring them bound. But when when he had that encounter and got knocked off of his beast and knocked to the ground, his eyes couldn't see no more and and had to be led by a man. At first he was getting ready to lead folk to to the synagogue or, or to the judgment hall, but now somebody gotta lead him to Damascus or lead him uh, uh, to where he can be sat down and talk, just change his whole, his whole day. His whole journey was changed. So we got to keep this thing fresh. We cannot allow it to get old or stale. This conversion, we got to learn how to keep it fresh in our walk. Keep it fresh through prayer. Keep it fresh through Bible study. Keep it fresh through a devotion. Keep it fresh through love. The Bible says if you have fellowship, one with another. That See, that's where this lockdown is trying to disrupt fellowship because fellowship brings about cleansing. The scripture said, if you have fellowship one with another, the blood of Jesus Christ or Yahushua cleanses us from all sin. So just by us coming together, having fellowship, there's a, a washing and, and, and a renewing taking place like one hand washing the other. So uh, we got to have some kind of fellowship. And while Paul was knocked off his beast and taken to Ananias, they had fellowship, they taught him, they gave him something to eat, and then he, he, he was strengthened and come out preaching Christ. A while ago, you were talking something else. The other folk were scared of him. Man, don't, don't you know who that is? Well, he's a changed man. So, my friend, I, that's all I'm, I'm going to talk about. I just wanted to pause right here and talk about, amen, spiritual conversion. Yes, sir, that's what I want to talk about. Spiritual conversion. So we got to be converted. We got to be converted. Things got to change in our life. All right, that's all I have for today. Make sure you undergo spiritual conversion. Peace.